hello guys welcome to knowledge india once again now in this tutorial we are going to talk about different storage options uh, on available on aws right um, as you can see we have three things s3 uh, ebs and efs so s3 stands for simple storage service ebs is elastic block store and efs which came probably a year and a half back that is elastic file system now uh, before we move further we need to understand what is the difference between block level storage and object level storage that will uh, help us understand why there are different offerings available uh, like s3 and ebs in place so in order to understand that i'm taking an example of a file let's say you have an excel file which is of 100 mb in size okay and you go want to take that file and save it on your laptop or desktop now depending on the on the block size which is there on the hard disk of your laptop the file will take n number of blocks uh, i'm sure if you have ever formatted your system and you try to create partitions you would have seen that on one of the steps it it uh, it asks you that what would be the size of your blocks right the size of the blocks on your uh, on your disk so we, we give it normally it could be like we can do it anything we can give it 256 kb we can give it half mb like 512 kb or things like that so let's let's consider that uh, we our uh, you know the block size is uh, 512 kb or half mb and uh, i go ahead and save this 100 mb file on that disk it is going to take uh, 200 blocks right 100 200 by 0.5 so it is going to take 200 blocks now uh, that is what is represented on the left hand side now let's say if, if this file is opened again and i go ahead and change the content of one or two cells within that excel file and then i try to save that file again do i need to whether it would be required that we need to update all the 200 blocks for that file in order to put this change on the disk the answer is no because it is a block level storage it supports operation at block level which means the data which has been changed only for only for that uh, you know only for those uh, that data set uh, some of the blocks need to be updated and hence all the 200 blocks would not be rewritten again whereas uh, if you take the same file and you have put it uh, into an object level storage and you do the, do the same activity of opening it and trying to change a small amount of content within that and then you try to save it the complete 100 MB file needs to be flushed out or needs to be deleted and once again a complete 100, 100 MB copy needs to be put there or needs to be written there so which means it will take more time in order to you know in order to write that so that should give you understanding how uh, block storage and object level storage uh, you know it works uh, of course if you have to do if you have to do very fast read and write operations at the same time block level storage is the right option whereas uh, if you are if you are going to put uh, you know some files once in a while and after that continuously it would be read uh, you know again and again then object storage is the right solution meaning at the same time if read and write is happening then object storage is not the right thing to be used okay so uh, if you if you try to see here in terms of aws block storage uh, offering is ebs okay even efs is even efs is a block level storage but we'll just come to that uh, so ebs is block level storage and s3 is object level storage now uh, quickly i will i would try to cover a few things here uh, uh, we can go uh, you know in a different tutorial we'll cover in detail about s3 but uh, for now uh, uh, what are the typical use cases when you should use uh, s3 any use case or any scenario where either you are writing continuously and not reading the same thing at the same at the time or not updating it s3 is uh, s3 is good right you want to ingest lot of log files from different sources continuous ingestion do that on s3 or else you want to you want to keep the static assets of your website uh, uh, and then you know you put it once and after that it is being accessed across the world write once read many times that is the pattern so in such cases as well s3 is, is the right solution right uh, you also get the benefit that you do not need to plan for the sizing uh, you can go ahead and just keep dumping your data on s3 
and it just scales. So you never size uh, your bucket at all. It is basically unlimited storage. Um, but at the same time, it is not a storage which is suitable for uh, hosting your OS files or hosting your database files as such, right? It can be used for backup, but this cannot act as a disk with your servers and it cannot keep your uh, uh, operating system files or database related files. So that part should be clear. Many times I get this question and hence I'm trying to make clear. The, what is the reason for that? I told you before. The type of operations which are possible on object level storage like S3 would not be uh, would not be optimum for operating system and databases, right? They, in case of uh, OS and database, very fast read write happens on the disk. So what is the solution for that? EBS is the right thing. EBS works best as your, you know, as the hard disk or as the disk for your service. So use EBS uh, with your EC2. They are uh, persistent uh, in nature. EBS, uh, even if you uh, stop your EC2 instance, the data on EBS would not be lost. And uh, depending on the type of EBS, you can achieve really high uh, read and write performance. Uh, by default, whenever you create uh, an EBS volume, it is replicated uh, like two times within the same AZ. Remember that within within the AZ in which you create it, not across AZs. Also, an EBS volume can only be mounted to one EC2 at a time, and uh, the EC2 and uh, the EBS volume both should be there in the same availability zone. Right. So many of the times, people go ahead and create a new, uh, you know, a new uh, EBS volume, and then when when they are trying to attach it uh, to an EC2, the EC2 is on the other AZ, it won't work. So take care of that. So moving ahead um, about EFS, so uh, people used to have uh, this uh, this particular use case that they want to have a file system which should be mounted on different uh, servers at the same time, meaning from, from five different servers, they should be able to write on, on one shared file system, right? But that type of offering was not available earlier. And uh, I've seen that uh, many of the times uh, people go ahead and mount S3 bucket itself as uh, as a disk on, on EC2. There are utilities like S3FS, etc., with which you can do that. Uh, that is not a very recommended solution because uh, many of the times, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't perform well. It gives a lot of errors as well. At times, the files do not sync between your system and S3. So ins uh, instead of that, you can go ahead and use uh, the this new offering Elastic File System. It is uh, it is available, like it is generally available now. So you can go ahead and make use of EFS. The way EFS works is it is again, uh, you can think of it as a, as a block level disk, which you can mount uh, on your EC2 machines. The good thing is, one EFS uh, volume can be mounted to n number of different EC2 machines within a region. That's the good thing, right? Also, the underlying, uh, you know, underlying mechanism, the way it is implemented, when you create, when you create an EFS volume, uh, there are, you know, it gets replicated across different availability zones within that region. So that is a really good thing. So you, you can have one EC2 in AZA, another one in AZB, and you can mount to the same, uh, to, you know, to the same EFS volume. That's a really great thing. In addition to that, uh, you can also mount uh, an EFS volume to your, uh, to your on-prem servers uh, if you have a VPN connection or direct connect uh, established, right? And the last point, you do not need to size for it. You could just go ahead and create it, same like S3. Uh, as you put the data, it scales automatically, so you do not need to plan uh, in terms of uh, its size at all. Whereas in case of EBS, you need to plan that. All right, so I, I wanted to cover these uh, three things and uh, clarify the difference between uh, between this between uh, you know these three offerings because people I've seen people getting confused across these things. There will be a few detailed to, detailed tutorials which will be coming, and. Uh, uh, I'll try to dig deeper into this stuff. Till then, uh, if you have any requests, please go ahead and write it, and I'll try to pick it up and make tutorial on that. Thank you. Please, uh, if you like it, you can go ahead and share it. Thank you.